welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged and another edition in our series, Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management, A to Z. Today we are back with the letter R. We're going to go a little bit old school here. We're going to go with release sales order picking, not automatic release sales orders to warehouse or automatic sales orders released to warehouse. Automatic transfer is very different. This is non-advanced warehousing. This is a form I used a lot as an end user in AX4.0 and later versions. And it's even a form I use quite a bit of as a consultant designing processes around for companies who were trying to manage their order release and fulfillment process, but weren't using advanced warehousing. Here under our inventory management module, you can see periodic tasks. We have release sales order picking. There's a similar form for release transfer order picking as well. The first thing that happens when you open this form is it asks you to apply an advanced filter and sort. It is a form that could take a long time to load depending on what query you put against it. You don't want to necessarily run this open-ended because there is some calculated data in this form and your intent is to optimize what you can release to the warehouse for picking. So the biggest piece to know after I select and enter my filters is that order lines that display in this form can have something executed against them. It's, they can either be delivered in full or at least partially. One of the order lines on the sales order has at least a quantity of one that can be delivered against it. I'll apply a filter at a warehouse level. And we'll go ahead and we'll put in. Warehouse 24 which is an advanced warehouse, but uh, in our demo purposes, we'll imagine it's not. We'll look at it just for the intent of understanding the form and how to use it in an execution scenario. This is a form that's broken up into many parts. As I expand, you can see this middle quantity section started to display that corresponds with the line I'm selecting showing the quantity of the line as well as the transactional status of that line has any quantity been delivered is it still on order is it reserved reserved ordered you can place reservations manually for an individual line from there the bottom part of the form is your on hand view which is very, very useful because you might not just want to run a batch job and see the result of what gets released to the warehouse. You want to actually queue up those orders and then release them. You know what to expect. So this form is very, very useful in that you can see order lines that can be delivered against. You can place reservations against them directly in that form, and you can actually see the current on hand status as well. If I navigate back up at the top part of the form is where we start to have all the action and executions. So we have our columns and then we have our action bar. On our columns, we have several bits of important information. We have the ship date, which we might often want to sort by. We have the sales order number, the customer account, the item number and quantities, the activation remainder. We'll get to activate in a minute and how you can use that. There's a customer classification group, so if you do prioritize customers and assign customer classification group to them in the case that like this item, there are many orders for the same item amongst different customers. You can prioritize those by more than just date using a customer classification group. And then as we tab over and see additional fields. Here's where we have information about what we can execute against. All orders can be delivered. This essentially means that of the item on the line I selected, our A0001, all sales orders that have that item on it in the site in a warehouse that this one is on can be fulfilled. So I don't need to allocate or decide which orders will get my on-hand inventory 
because all of the orders for that item in site two warehouse 24 can be fulfilled with the inventory we have on hand. If that's not selected, that means there is some allocation that needs to occur, which is where the next column requires allocation comes in. So this allows me to really see what decisions do I need to make. Then we have production orders and transfer orders exist. That allows us to see if we have supply, incoming supply of these items that can help execute fulfillment as well. So if we don't necessarily have 100% complete fulfillment, but we do have a production order that's coming in, we know we might be able to do a partial or hold this until we do have enough inventory. And then we have the possible delivery percentage. This is the percentage of lines on a single sales order that have the all orders that can be delivered selected. So the title can be a little bit misleading. I think people think it's a possible delivery percentage of an individual order, but it's actually the percentage of the lines on that order where all orders can be delivered. And um, really what that's representing is everything on an individual sales order. We don't need to make any allocation decisions because all of those items can be fulfilled out of that site and warehouse based on our current inventory for that demand. So now that we have an understanding of the columns, we can see all the various data points, whether it's the lines that I need to fulfill and sort on or the quantities and then the on hand information at the top is where we can start to apply mass updates or process these further. So I mentioned activation. Activation is essentially assigning reservations or marking all the lines to be reserved so we can then later process them to release for picking. So if there's no activation set, do I want to activate all orders where the entire order can be delivered? Very common scenario. All orders that have status physically reserved already, all orders that do not require manual allocation. So three pretty common scenarios where we know we don't need to review those orders and they're ready to ship out the door. We can go ahead and activate all of those lines. After activation, you typically then release for picking and create a picking list to the warehouse. If you use the functions button, you can get to the delivery remainder. That's useful in the case you need to update delivery remainder for cancellations or any edits. You can trace orders. You also have your standard inventory transactional forms, transactions on hand, reservations. You can do a pick directly from here if you have to, and you have a recalculate button. You might need the recalculate button because you've selected certain lines for activation and released them. You've had sales orders that have come in while you have this form opened. You have sales orders that have been canceled while this form has been opened. Inventory that's been taken. So recalculation allows you to essentially reapply the filter, and rerun it from a fresh view as soon as you need to. If you want to change the criteria, of what you selected. Perhaps you did customer classification group of A first and only looked at sales orders for those types of customers. You can click the select button, change your filters, and rerun the form. Here I might want to actually limit my ship date as another example, and I can say only show me orders with a ship date up through today. There's one other parameter worth noting here, and that's the deduct released for picking parameter. You typically want to exclude any on hand inventory for orders that have already been released for picking. Even if there's no physical reservation against them, you want to assume that they are allocated against. So you can select that parameter as well, and that might limit the lines you see available to fulfill based on the on hand inventory updates that have occurred. And that's really it. You continue to use this form to activate lines and release them for picking to create picking lists. And you execute against your distribution plan. You can apply reservations manually line by line. You can use the activation to do them in mass. 
and you can update this form throughout the day to get the most recent schedule based on your order entry patterns and your order fulfillment patterns. So it's a very, very useful form. It allows customer service to really have a lot of control over how they're bringing orders down to the warehouse. If somebody ever calls them and needs them to allocate inventory ahead of time, uh, they can do that if they have any information about what orders are able to be processed that day and reprioritize customer service can do that from this form as well and you can really control it by ship date or customer classification group or even individual customer if you have to the form really puts that ability in the user's hands and that's it for the letter r in our series dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management, Dynamics A to Z, and we will see you next time for the letter S.